hi everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Uh, today we're going to do part three of painting a peacock and we're going to be doing the tail. Now, I might get a little tripped over my words today because I just got back from the dentist and thank you Dr. DeLuna for fixing up my third broken tooth in the last three months. I really appreciate you fitting me in. Of course there was a cancellation because I'm about the only one crazy enough to go out in, you know, three feet of snow to be at the dentist today. I did. Oh well. All right. I have a bunch of um, bottles. I bought some plastic bottles. You can get these at the hardware store. And I fill up these bottles with paint. And this is acrylic paint, you guys, not oil. That would be expensive. Woo, yeah. But this is acrylic paint. And so I have them in all different colors. And so when I do uh, special painting parties, it makes it very easy. I just put them in my little bucket like this and I carry the paint in, in buckets and then I can squeeze them out around the table whenever I'm doing a painting party. But it also works really well as a painting uh, method because if you'll use a brush, uh, you can only really get a kind of a flat application. With squeeze models, you can get lines and squiggles and all kinds of wonderful things. Let's get going, good grief, stop talking lady. I'm going to use a little bit of um, let's see, what paint shall I use? I think I'm going to use a dark purple on this one. So I'm going to take one of my squeeze bottles and put a nice line of purple into the tray. And here's a fun little idea. Again, it's very hard to always be using a, um, a paintbrush for everything. So I have um, a piece of cardboard. It's just a thin piece of cardboard from a packaging of my paint brushes, actually. And I'm going to cut a little um, piece of that, like that, with my scissors. And so I have a little skinny piece of, of cardboard. And then I'm going to dip that into the purple paint along the edge, just along the edge, just like that. And now I'm going to come up to the top of the bird's head, and I'm going to just place that down and you can see how you can get whoo hang on snow is rumbling right off the top of the roof yeah i've got about three feet up there that it just keeps rolling off and the wind's blowing and the snow is just falling that scared me just a little okay back to painting um i've got this purple paint and my uh, little cardboard i'm going to continue making these little i'm going to fan them out and kind of a little bit of a a little fan shape off the top of the head and this cardboard idea is really a good uh, method for doing things like, you know, any kind of um, straight skinny line rather than trying to make it with a paintbrush with, you know, uh, and, and hold your hand steady. It's really very, very difficult. But with the cardboard, look how easy it is to make a straight line. There, look at that. Isn't that cool? It really is. It really is. All right, now. Uh, I will now put in a little bit of a lighter paint and put it into the teal. And then I'm going to give it a little bit more of a shimmer. I'm going to come alongside of it and put a lighter one right next to the dark. I hope I can line that up just right. Put the light one next to the dark, extend it out. And so it makes it look really three-dimensional. Oops, I just got a little on the bird. That's okay. It's only paint. And so I'm going to put it right here. And it begins to actually literally create a three-dimensional um, paint. It looks, it looks three-dimensional. And once it dries, you could be kind of blind and still be able to feel that as it sticks up beyond the surface of the paint. Okay, there's the, the quills that are kind of coming off the top of the head. But it doesn't end there, okay? It doesn't end there. So I'm going to take my bright brush, which is one with a, a flat edge on it, and I'm going to make some little V's at the top of these little um, uh, quills. Now you don't have to do these in purple and teal. You can do them in any, any color, just as long as you have a light and a dark. There. All right. That's kind of fancy. I'll do the same now with the teal. I'll add a little bit of teal onto the paint in a couple of spots just so that it looks like it's highlighted a little bit. And it gives it a little, a little more three dimension. Now I have a little bit of dark blue here on my palette, my fancy frozen food palette, and I'm going to come back in and make the correction where this hit there. There we go. 
and I'll just hit it with my fingers so it blends in a little bit. There we go. That's a good start. All right, guys, before we get up into this area too much, um, I'd like to create a little bit more texture on this tail. And uh, I'm going to start with thinking about these wonderful, um, these wonderful feathers. And I'm going to make just a thin line for individual feathers just to begin with, with my squirt bottle in white. And so I'm going to very carefully, and normally I would probably do this on a flat surface and allow this to kind of come down. So I'm going to very carefully begin to apply a bead of white paint down like this. Okay, and so I'm going to go along like this on, from the top. I hope you can see this. Squirt it from the top and pull this down into a nice long bead of paint. It's a little messy at the top. Get it going a little bit. You can see how it just creates that wonderful flow of paint. And, and then I will take a hair dryer to it in just a second. And we'll dry these off like this. There. Okay, and when you're not looking, I will go around the edges also all the way around. So I'm going to be right back. I'm going to dry this with the hair dryer. Hold on. Okay, I hit that with the hair dryer, and now I'm going to do, while it continues to kind of set up a little bit further, I'm going to take the little foam brush that I was using before, and I'm going to go back at the back end again, and this time I am going to take some copper metallic paint. I'm going to dip that into the copper metallic paint and create a little kind of a, a piece of paint there. Looks like I got a little blue in it. And then I'm going to make dots on the back of this part of the bird. So I've got a little bit of a copper color, like that. And I'm just lining up about three dots across. And then I'll make this a little bit bigger. Comes across about three there. And I'll just continue up the, uh, the bird with these copper dots. This is just the first layer of paint, and then I'm going to add some chartreuse lime green onto that. That'll be neat. All right, now, more hair dryer, please. Okay. Okay, I've dried that a little bit with the hair dryer. I'm going to let that set up a little more. You can see there's a lot of texture that I've left behind. Now, as the paint dries even further, it will shrink down and you won't have quite as much texture there uh, later on. There are different things that you can do to keep the texture as big as you set it by using a texture medium, but that will be for another uh, episode. Now, uh, what I'd like to do at this stage is, I've got, this is, is pretty much dry right here. That's going to be kind of our framework for the drips that are going to follow. This is really going to be fun. All right, let's start out with, um, actually, I'm going to start out with a copper color. Now, these little squeeze bottles are really fun. Um, they actually come when I color my hair. Save your bottles, you guys. Rinse them out really good, and you can actually use them to put your paint in and squeeze things out with ease, hopefully. Now, I'm going to put another copper dot right here, and I'm going to drag that down a little bit and then create this line that's going to rest on top of that white, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. And it's okay if it doesn't. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. We're going to just kind of swing it down a little bit. I'm going to squeeze it out. I need to put a little more pressure on it and create another line of copper coming down like that in between each one of those white and the white stripes. So eventually all this stuff is going to kind of run together a little bit. So don't worry about it if it doesn't, you know, look great at the beginning. I'm going to bring it down, get it as close to the white without hitting the white. And then we'll come down each one, a little bit of that copper paint. Oops, it's spitting on me. That's all right. That's actually what the Q-tips are for. When you get a little bit of a spatter that you don't really want in your painting, just pick that Q-tip up and... Uh, and kind of wipe that off a little bit. Add some more copper. There's an awful lot of copper color in an actual peacock feather. And I would like to thank my friend Ashley for 
giving me a whole stack of peacock feathers to look at because she had made a, um, a Halloween costume. She was a peacock for Halloween and she gave me these extra peacock feathers that she no longer needed. So um, I'm fascinated with the wonderful divine design of these feathers because they are really, really cool. If you've never looked at one, take a look at them. They only have the design on one side and then none on the other. And those are natural, everybody. It's not, it's just the actual way that they grow. It's really neat. So, okay, here comes the copper coming down. I'll finish up these last strokes like that. And it's getting a little drippy. There's a big glump right here. I think maybe I'll pull some of that off a little bit with a paintbrush. It's just a little too heavy. There, that works. I just lift it off that big lump of, uh, of that bronze color or that copper color. All right, now what's next? The next thing is going to be some lime green or chartreuse. Okay, I'm going to stack that one next to this one. And this one is a lot wetter or it's a little bit more uh, liquid in its form, so it's going to drip over. Now I'm going to tip the canvas slightly because I don't want those lines to jump over and then turn into, you know, going straight down. So I'm going to direct the flow of the paint. This is not just what we call a dirty pour where, you know, if you've watched those um, where they just pour random paint all over the place and hope for something good to happen. No, we're steering the paint a little bit. If it starts going one direction, I want to go lift it into uh, and just kind of move it in uh, the direction that I want the paint to go. So a couple little lines here and there. I'm giving it a little spatter. You can see how the, the paint sort of moves on its own a little bit. I don't want to lose all the copper, but I'm going to let it just kind of keep flowing. There, this is going to be neat. And eventually I don't want to see hardly any of that white at all sticking out, so that's what I'm, I'm shooting for. It's a very different way of doing something. I know. Okay, so it's sort of dripping down, little by little, down the canvas, and I'm just steering it as best as I can. And I'm going to also grab some teal. See if I have enough to get it going here. Yeah, there's some little teal drops at the top of each one of those. Started out a little bit more straight. Now when I change directions on this thing, you know, each one of those paint drops starts moving in its own way. And so it's a little bit harder to control when you have a bunch of them going at the same time. But it's really fun. Actually, I have a middle glue that is called Radiant Blue. And it's a little bit closer to the color of the body of the animal. So I'll just keep adding more and more paint. All right. and for some reason, I like to just add it at the very top. It gets it a little bit thicker at the top, and then it thins out at the bottom. If I can get this down. Oh, there we go. A little muscle. Here we go. All right, little blue. Blue dot, blue dot. Blue dot, a little bit of blue dot, blue dot. That's interesting. And this paint, I'm realizing, is much, much more uh, viscous or thicker than the other paints. So what, would, what are we going to do? I'm going to actually try one other thing. I'm getting a little experimental on this one again. I'm going to put a little bit of this um, metallic green. And it's not in an appropriate bottle, but I'm going to try squeezing a little bit of the metallic green out well in the middle of that that's cool I'm actually gonna lay it down flat a little bit like this yeah that's better put a couple of blobs of green the metallic green I have metallic purple now you can see it's starting to make some some bigger blobs kind of coming down and then I'm gonna add a little more of the chartreuse that's runnier onto the top of it so that it might push that down a little bit or drag the blues down just a little bit and add some more interest. Wow, this is so neat. 
I like it a lot. Mm. Yeah, hope you can see that. Hope it's not like watching paint dry, you know. And I'm seeing that my copper is really um, kind of getting uh, covered up. That's all right. We'll add more if we need it. You know, it's not a big problem. So I'm going to add some more there. A little more green at the top of that to drag the blue into the party. Yeah, I really like that uh, metallic color. What happens if I add a little bit of that purple metallic? That might be cool. Let's try that. Okay, now I'm going to lay it down just a little bit more flat this time as I'm applying a little bit of purple paint to it. A couple of blobs of purple metallic paint on there and just a few spots right at the top. You can see that right there. Here it is. Boom, boom, boom. Right there. Now, do you see how that white paint that we put down initially is kind of creating that framework to where they'll, the pieces of paint will flow in an appropriate direction? Uh, you are really directing the paint in a way. <clears throat> if you want it to go even more um, quickly, you can always use a little bit of pouring medium in with your paint. And that really helps an awful lot too. And then I want, I'm going to put a little more green on top. I think I'm liking that lime green. I'm almost using the lime green. Sorry for my elbow, everybody. The lime green as a pouring medium in a way. Now what's going to happen with this is probably we're going to have so much paint on here that we won't have to worry about the eyes of the tail feathers. They're really pretty, but we don't necessarily have to put them on, especially at the top part of this paint. Now, I'm going to try to do something a little bit, uh, two things at one time. I'm going to tip it completely sideways now and see what happens. See if it goes over, it will kind of jump over the lines right there. There we go. Yeah, now it's really getting interesting as it flows down over the top. I'm watching it and I'm, I'm being careful to watch it and make sure it doesn't do anything I don't want it to do. Creating a natural flow of things. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. Hope I don't dump a whole tray full of paint. That would just do it. See how that's just kind of coming out in a natural flow. I just think that's so wonderful. Let's see if I can do two things at one time. All right. So I have my little tray with the chartreuse green. Wow, it's like being a juggler. Now I'm going to come up here because this is what I want to have in the greens as well. So I'm going to come up here and leaving a little bit of that copper to stick out, I'm going to put some chartreuse green right there. So it looks like green feathers our green small feathers kind of coming down this copper back like that. All right. It's supposed to be green, not copper, but I want that copper as part of the feathers or just the some of the color that's sticking out underneath. That's awesome. I've got to keep my eye on what's going on down here. Ooh. That's a good start on that back part. I'm going to come up a little bit into the back a little like that. So the, a little bit of the copper is sticking out. Now I'm going to come back in and we're going to squeeze some more paint. Sometimes when I'm doing one of the, the textured pieces, I will literally, I'll, I'll thin out some of this copper paint and I will um, take it and, and put my fingers in it and just splat it across the canvas in a, like, you know, just put some like this and just go psh, psh, psh with my hands. You should see my wall. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. See, if I've got, I've got some orange paint I'm kind of thinking about to add to it. So I'm going to put that on top of the copper. I just landed. And then see if I can encourage the copper to run just a little bit more. This is a really runny orange. There. Just adds a little bit of heat to it. I like that. Okay, so you guys kind of get the idea here. Uh, I'm going to finish off by add, squeezing a little bit more paint here and there. I'm going to let this run, I'm going to steer it, and then we'll come back in and I'm going to do the pattern up here on the wing. So I'll be back after I finish kind of dripping a bunch more paint down and I'll show you how it looks in just a moment. And uh, I'm going to create another bit of texture on this area that I call the wing. And so I'm going to shake my white right down to the end. This is so exciting. And I'm going to think about this as being a rounded object 
And so I'm going to begin, let's see, do I want to begin at the bottom? Yeah, I'm going to begin at the bottom of the tail, and I'm going to make these little uh, C's, little C's, like that. There's a little letter C, I don't know if you can see that. Uh, and then I'm going to make a little C, and another little C, and I'm just looping them together. And then I'm going to overlap it a little bit and make a second one that overlaps, and we're just kind of creating a little bit of a feather design with some texture. This is a highly textured painting. Now see how these are, are beginning to come together here and I'm overlapping them so the end of the C has a little bit of a, a feather here or the um, so it's like when you're doing bricks you know you don't just line them all straight up they don't stay put. So I'm overlapping these C's and I'll do another one here another one here. I'm gonna go all the way up to the top with this white paint and then I'm going to hit it again with the dryer, I think. I'm going to now go back in and add a little bit more so that I don't have these white things sticking out. I actually added a little bit more white right here, but it's really coming together. And then uh, I'll be right back and I'll show you basically how it turns out. Okay, hold on, don't go away. All right, everybody, I put layer upon layer of bright colors onto our tail, and uh, it took quite a bit of time. And so I um, steered it by tipping it back and forth, and I've been enjoying adding the paint and moving it around. It's not a random, abstract idea, everybody. No, this one actually does take a lot of thought. Don't forget. And so I'm now going to tip this back up. I'm going to allow it to dry. And I probably changed the background. Yeah, you know, that's what we do as artists. We change things until we're really happy with it. And at that point, I'm going to put it on my Etsy site. So don't forget to go check it out at nettykstudio.etsy.com. And I may show you uh, how it ends up in our next lesson uh, when we meet again. So if you want to be notified, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye for now.